Here we're going to look at pesticide application in safety. And these rules apply whether you're doing a large scale spray or a little spot spray or spraying a whole field with a backpack sprayer. Um, all of these rules still apply. And the key part here with the safety is that you want to read and follow the labels that are posted there. Uh, the label is the law is kind of the nice little way to remember that. Uh, you want to use only what's needed. You want to use low toxicity pesticides if that's an option. You want to consider the weather if you're an outdoor application. Don't apply just before a heavy rain uh, and chance it could be washed away. You want to use proper equipment so you're getting good coverage for both the plants and protecting you. Proper disposal of empty containers when you're done uh, or finish the pesticide container. Avoid contaminating the environment, meaning don't apply right next to uh, waterways. Protect from exposure for yourself. Post warning signs, as we see here, and no emergency procedures. And that's good if you're um, applying them. Also, a worker in an area that might be using pesticides. Again, we see these signs in danger and these big red signs and the, and the skull and the crossbones uh, here. Uh, so while it is word for caution, they can be applied in a safe manner if you do take into consideration uh, what the label says and properly protect yourself. That has different types of pesticide uh, products. One is wettable powders, as we see here with the cocoa powder to make chocolate milk. Uh, wettable powders are a dry product that mixes well with water to create a liquid suspension that can be applied through a variety of methods. Growers tend to like this because of the small, small storage space of the actual product. Then there's actual liquid products, and these are liquid suspensions. Growers like the ease of use of this, and we see here with uh, like cranberry juice here. Uh, ease of use with this product, but sometimes the binders can hold that hold the chemical in suspension can cause increase the chance of leaf burn. Uh, so let's say some growers tend to like the wettable powders because they lack that binding agent. Then there's dust or powders, and that can be applied simply as like this powder form. Growers can have difficulty applying these products and getting even coverage, especially for outdoor applications. It's almost not possible because there's always a little bit of a breeze. Um, it'd be difficult to get around plants with the dust products. There's making product applications. So any systemic uh, synthetic chemical products are not advised for cannabis because of they will go through the entire plant and can end up in the buds and when burned can cause volatiles to form. I want to be careful to read the labels. Um, however, this presents quite a challenge for cannabis because there's typically a lack of labeling of products specifically listed for cannabis. Uh, sprays can be beneficial, but can be over applied. So just be mindful of when you made a last application and why you're making that application. Phytotoxicity can result uh, as more damage than benefit. So you want to be mindful as you want to be applying something to your plants for the overall benefit, not the harm. Watch the spray timing. Low light is preferred, um, and that incurs on um, outdoor applications and low light also in indoor applications. You want to mix these products just because you want to get it done quicker. You want to do what's called a jar test where you're mixing those ahead of time to see if there's any interactions that are occurring. And hot temps will increase the likelihood of damage to the plants. If you're important on outdoor applications if you're experiencing a heat wave or indoor applications if you're applying it at the peak of heating and heat of the grow space that you have. Product al uh, applicators. The plant area and location will um, help in deciding what's the best fit for your applicators. There's a pump sprayer, as we see here, a hand or backpack, and it allows for maximum grower control and best for small spaces and or localized applications. We see here a mist blower. It's motorized and allows for quickest coverage with minimal effort. You can also get really hot, um, tall on plants for very high applications. It's basically a leaf blower with a water tank on the back. Then we have electric foggers um, and offer many benefits as the mist blower here, but better suited for indoor operations. And again, can cover that nice kind of fog, that even coverage of plants. These are just some different ways you can apply pesticides. Taking all these into consideration will allow for efficient application um, for the plants and minimize environmental impacts.